Hey guys, this is a mini version of Alex Lafkus's Deceiver. The Deceiver itself is unique because it has multiple articulations. First, in the tail shank here, which you can see, and then, of course, between the rear hook and the front hook. I had this out on the water yesterday and absolutely crushed the brown trout. The cool thing is, in the water, it comes alive, all these articulations moving together, it looks absolutely insane. The materials themselves are pretty basic. I've got hen capes, basically in white and then in a grizzly. I've got some Palmer chenille in here in medium, in gray. I've got some UV peacock. I've got a little bit of deer hair. And then up front, I've got a brush. And that brush, between that brush and that rear tail, it's really what makes everything kick and look insane in the water. So, without further ado, let's get tying. All right, so let's get tying. We're gonna start with a fish skull. This is a uh, tail shank. And next I'm going to use Vivas GSP. I'm using size 50, which is small for me. And I'm going to lay down a base layer as even as I can of thread. Here I have a white variant cape and I've picked off um, two feathers that I'm going to use for the, the tail itself and I'm going to trim them each at about three quarters of an inch. So about three quarters and then you just peel the fibers back. There's one. And now I'll do the next. Try to be about the same in length. There's about three quarters. Let's peel it right back. Okay, now I'll take the feathers, basically put them side by side just to make sure I have the lengths right. And I just married the feathers together here. And now I'm just going to trim whatever excess there is just by doing a quick peel. The other thing that I'm going to do just to help save a little bit of time is I'm going to grab some pliers and I'm just going to gently flatten the stems of that feather right down. The reason why that's important is because when we put the feathers along the side to put them into position, it will help make that tying in process just a little bit easier. All right, so now I'm just going to do a couple loose wraps. There's two loose wraps. I'm gonna align that stem right along the side of the hook. I'm gonna just give it a little more tension. Okay, so that's nice and straight. That looks good. Take the next feather, do the exact same thing. I'm gonna lay it right along the side. on there, making sure those feathers are married, they look good. Okay, so we got the feathers in position. Gonna trim that excess off. And next. So next material, this is um, lateral scale from Flashaboo. And I'm just going to put some very fine flash in the sides. This obviously is the, the fine material. So I'm just going to double it up, I'm going to wrap it around, come on to the side, just do some nice gentle wraps coming right down the side. I'm going to clip it off just a little bit longer than the thread itself, or than the feather itself. The other half of the lateral scale, exact same thing, I'm going to double it over right on itself. Pull it right along the side and just go right down, doing some nice, gentle 
wraps because I don't want to mess those feathers up. And I'm going to do the exact same thing, trim it just a little bit beyond the feather itself. Okay, that looks good. Next, I'm going to use a little bit of gray. This happens to be a hen cape. And what I'm going to do is just pick off a nice webby feather um, with the stem actually a little bit longer. It looks like it's going to be about um, three quarters of the way on the, the cape itself. I just want a web that's basically going to cover and go beyond uh, the feathers themselves just to be able to blend through and create and cover that little bit of a gap there. So here's my feather. All I'm going to do is I'm going to preen the materials back because I want to use this material here and I'm going to cut the excess off. I'm going to create basically a little bit of a, a triangle there. Now I'm going to tie that triangle in. I'm going to tie it in directly on top. And there it is. And I'm going to grab my hackle pliers. These are just some electrical clamps that you can get at Radio Shack. And now I'm just going to gently wrap that feather forward. And I licked my fingers. I'm pulling the feathers forward. And I'm being very careful not to wrap over the stem itself. And I'm trying to make sure that the feathers themselves actually angle backwards. I am putting the wraps fairly close together. Just trying to, again, get as much of that material in and hanging back as, as possible. All right, and that one I'm actually going over top the last, and now I'm just going to come behind the material. There's once, twice, and now come in front. I'm going to clip. That stem, being careful not to clip off any of the additional feathers. And now I'm just going to do a whip finish. Now the thing on these shanks that you got to pay attention to is there is sometimes a little bit of a gap in the in the front there. And you just have to be careful not to get caught in there. And I'm just going to do two wraps. And cut it off. Okay. Hit it with a little bit of super glue. Okay, so now we're gonna do the rear articulation. What I've got here is just a little bit of my um, Orvis. This is Orvis uh, Super Strong. This is uh, 25 pounds. And I've cut off about a two inch section, which you can see right here. I'm just gonna go through before removing the shank out of the vise and just pull to create a little bit of a, a kink in it so that it has a, a seating spot. Okay, looks good. So let's start with the rear hook. I'm gonna start with a B10S size number 10. And I'm continuing with my Vivas 50 because this number 10 is small. All right, I've got the rear shank and I've got my 25 pound and what I'm gonna do is just lay it right along the side of the, the shank do a couple loose wraps just to make sure that everything is aligned I'm actually gonna bring it in just a little bit tighter because you want it to be right off the back and I'm gonna come in nice and tight there we go, you can see how close that uh, loop is and how close that rear shank is. Looks good. I'm gonna come forward here. Tighten everything. Fold it back over. 
will go right back over on top of it, flip off the excess mono, finish tying down. I'm gonna come in with my super glue, zap, put a little drop on there, get that excess off. And then I'm just gonna go through and wrap over it just again to lock everything into position. And I've got just a little tissue here used to get whatever remains. Okay. So that looks good. <clears throat> Now to, to help with the articulation, I'm just going to grab a little ice dub pearl. I'm just going to create a little ball at the back. What I've found is by doing that, it helps keep the materials off of the rear articulation. And you'll see what I mean in a minute. It's just a very simple step, but it really helps keep everything clean and keep the materials off, which is extremely important. All right, so I've got another hen hackle. This happens to be grizzly. I'm just gonna pop one of the, the feathers off, just pull it off, and I want the fuzzy stuff and a little bit of that grizzly um, on the back, and I'm gonna do the exact same thing that I did before where I've preened the feather. I'm just gonna do a quick clip. I've got the little mini triangle there, and now I'm just going to tie it in. And I'm going to use my handy duty clip, preen the feathers back. I'm just gonna wrap up the hook. And I'm gonna wrap up, eventually what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wrap right back over top. Again, all I'm trying to do here is to cover my little mono loop in the back. So this is just basically a cover up. I'm just gonna go over top once, twice. I'm gonna go in front of it twice, cinch it down, clip this off. Looks good. wrap right back and as you can see what that little dubbing ball does is it keeps the feathers nice and splayed out yet you still get that that coverage which looks really really nice okay next I'm going to use a little bit of medium Palmer chenille this is in the color gray Grab a little, and I'm going to tie it on. We're going to do a little bit of a trim on this Palmer material. You can see the front part here, I already did a little bit of trim work, and on the back, because I, I had tied another fly with this, so I'm going to do the exact same thing. I'm just going to come in. You can see I've got about half the material, and I'm just going to cut it right off. Because if you use the full length of even this medium material, it's just way too much. It just overpowers the, the fly. All right, so I'm going to go forward. I'm just going to tie this off real quick. Just do a single half hitch. And I'm going to use the rubbery feature of the vise. So I'm just going to put the thread into position there and just walk up. Now that material started to go wonky on me, so I'm just gonna reverse and go the other way. What you'll find is with this Palmer material, sometimes it wants to go one way, sometimes it wants to go the other. You can see here, now it's behaving. I'm not fighting the material at all. And I'm leaving a little bit of a gap as I walk up, just making sure that there's gonna be translucency. You do not wanna stack the material right on top of it. What'll happen is it'll just become this giant glob of flash and it'll just look really, really crappy. You always wanna have some translucency with your fly so that the light can show through just like a true minnow itself. 
All right, so again, through the back once, twice, now in front, once, twice, cinch it down, clip it off. You can see there are some random materials. Just gonna do a quick trim, get them off there. It's a lot easier just to get a few materials than it is to get the whole. Okay, next, I'm going back to my Grizzly. This time I'm gonna grab a feather that's a little bit larger, a little bit webbier, and that has a little bit more um, marabou on it. So just grabbing, this one looks good. I want it to be a little bit bigger than the one in the back too, because right, what we're doing is we're creating that, um, that taper. And we want, of course, the minnow head to be larger than the back. So same thing, I'm gonna preen the materials back. I'm gonna create that little bit of a triangle and I'm just gonna do a clip, come in front, wrap it down. And I'm gonna go back on that Palmer chenille and grab my clamp and clip here start wrapping forward again pulling the material back trying to create different color right I got a little bit of a gray in there I want it I don't want it to just be solid white I want to have some different colors which is why I'm using the different materials and trying to blend them together and on the front got a little bit of that fuzzy marabou I really like how that looks just do one more wrap and then gonna tie it off. Okay, that looks good. Behind once, twice, and then come in front. Go right over top of that material. Now I'm coming back in with my scissors. Just gonna find that stem. Just clip the stem. Be careful not to clip all the materials. All right, green it back, that looks good. Gonna whip finish it. I'm gonna do the exact same thing here with the super glue. So, I'm gonna grab my bodkin. I'm just gonna put a little bit of super glue on that bodkin again. I'm always nervous with this zap that it's just gonna cover everything. And that's the last thing I want. I just put a little bit on a piece of plastic here, put it on my bodkin, and just it right down. Okay, that's good. Next, I'm just gonna grab my Velcro and just come through pull the materials forward. That just helps to get the materials that were stuck out. You can see we're starting to create that taper that makes it look like a, a little minnow. Okay. Next. Orvis, 25 pound, mono. I've cut it into a about a four inch piece that's probably way too big. And now I'm going to put on some beads. These are beads I get from Michaels. These are eight aught glass beads. So I already put the glass beads on here. As you can see, I've got two silvers. Just gonna feed that 25 pound mono right through beads. The same thing, I'm going to pull while that hook shank is still in the vise. Create that V. Alright, that looks good. Okay, time for the hook. We're going to use a B10S size number 8. I've grabbed my rear tail section here, which has got the two articulations. Just lining up the mono and the beads. Should probably put the base layer of thread down first. There we go. Just gonna 
lay it right along the side of the shank. Looks good. Now I'm just going to pull it tight, but I want to maintain about three quarters of an inch of gap between the two hooks. If I don't do that, I'm at risk of fish not being able to hook themselves. And especially with these smaller hooks, you really want to make sure that you maintain that, that gap. Got that tied in there. I'm gonna hit it with the zap. And just tying over it. I'm gonna grab my hair clip just to keep that out of the way. And I'm gonna do the exact same thing on this back part of the shank. I'm gonna use the ice dub in pearl and I'm gonna create that little bit of ball just to keep all the materials when I put it on there from collapsing on the articulation, which I found is really important and really makes a difference. Once I get this um, ball created, I'm going to grab a little more off of that grizzly cape. And I'm going to use a larger piece of Grizzly basically to go back over top of everything to be able to cover up that articulation in the in the back. Okay, so we got the ice stub there. I've got my Grizzly cape again. I'm just going to grab one of the largest feathers that's on this cape. Again, I want it to be able to cover that shank. So I've got a nice feather here picked out. Nice and long. Webby. And now I'm going to just go back because I want those longer fibers. Same exact thing. I'm going to create that triangle. And I'm going to tie it in. Same process. I'm going to wrap it. Bring the feathers back. Wrap. Wrap each progressively forward. Again, trying to keep those feathers going in the same direction. So I go back. And eventually, what I'm going to do, just like I did on the other parts, is I'm going to cover it up. So I'm going to tie right over top of everything. Okay, so I'm going to tie it off two in the front, or two in the back, and now two in the front. Be careful to trim, not to cut any of your materials off. Green everything back, and I'm just gonna basically walk back right to that dubbing wall. All right, so that looks good. Next, back to my gray Palmer chenille. So I have the piece that's still out. I'm gonna tie it in. And this time I'm going to leave some of the fibers long. So you can see this time it doesn't want me to go under, it looks like it wants me to go over top can't explain how that works but that's what happens again I'm not going to wrap on top I'm gonna to leave a space in between and you can see now I've progressed from that shorter material into the longer which I'm going to keep because again I'm at the head and I want the head to be a little bit bulkier to have a little bit more water resistance than the back Okay, I'm gonna tie it off right here, leaving myself about two eye lengths in the front.
All right. Next, I'm going to use a little bit of bucktail. So this is obviously white. And what I'm going to do is tie it so that it extends over the top. I want it to go basically to here and here. Again, cr helping to create a profile and helping to cover that gap again. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some feathers from about, or some hair from about midsection. I'm just going to take about a match sticks worth. So I'm going to clip, clip that off. And I can always reduce the amount. That just happens to be the amount that I'm starting with. And I'll eyeball it and I'll look at it. I'm gonna take about a quarter of that away or about half of that away and just take a look. That looks a little light. I'm just gonna go back and put some more on. It's always easy to take materials off right before you tie it on. And what I'm trying to do, one, I want to maintain translucency, as you hear me say time and time again. Two, I don't want so much bucktail on there that it actually inhibits the movement of the back. And then three, I just want enough to give the illusion of the body itself. I don't want it to be crazy wind resistant. So that looks good. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to old school um, just pull the, the tips and then reposition them back in. This is an alternative method to using a, a hair stacker. I'm just trying to get the majority of the tips aligned and those that look unruly or that don't want to line up, just pull them out of there. Okay, next I'm gonna take a look at the length. Again, what I wanted to do is go back to the tip. I don't want it to go beyond. And I'm just going to basically come in directly from the front and I'm going to do a couple loose wraps. So just one, two loose wraps. I wanna get everything spread out equally between top and, and bottom. And this is the time to do it. That looks right. Now I'm gonna come back and I'm just going to cinch. I'm gonna look again. We're going to pull that back part out because again, I want to look and make sure that looks good. All right, so now I'm going to cinch it down and I'm going to clip that excess material off. Okay, just make sure it doesn't get in the way of the eye. Looks like it's gonna get in the way of the eye. Just take out your handy dandy razor blade and just cut it off. All right, done. Okay, next material, UV Peacock. And I just want enough, I wanna create the illusion of that green back, so. grab maybe 10 different pieces. I know at the end I'm not going to use all of them. I'm going to just have the tips themselves. I'm going to eliminate those fat. I don't, I don't like the way they look. Get rid of some of those extras, the shorties. And looks like I have maybe five or six in total now. And that one is long, I'm just gonna put it back in. And now as far as the distance, I want again it to come right to the head. So just to the tip itself. So I'm not obviously putting in a lot of material. And with peacock curl, you have to do two loose wraps and then move forward and progressively get tighter. Otherwise, what's gonna happen is your peacock curl is just gonna stand straight up and it'll look absolutely crappy. So always start loose and then tighten. All right, so that looks good. 
Next, I have a streamer brush. And this streamer brush is white. And this is how I'm going to create my head. I'm just gonna pull off some materials, make it easy to tie in. That looks good. Tie in. Right back to that peacock curl. Make sure that it's not making it stand up. Come back up to the eye of the hook itself. Okay. Now, with the material, I'm going to wrap and try to keep these fibers out of the way as you wrap forward and just preen them back, pull down. You know, you got that wire in there, makes it really easy. And the cool thing about this brush, and I am putting it right next, each wrap is right next to one another, so I'm not leaving any gap in here. What this does is this creates water resistance and it will make your fly just wiggle and move like absolutely crazy. So, like, yeah, one more in there. Just come around the front and now I'm going to come over top, kind of wiggling it in there once, twice, and I'm going to come in front. And I have an old crappy pair of scissors, a pair of scissors that I've basically worn out. And I'm just going to trim that wire. Come back in. Get a couple wraps. That's good. Next, I'm gonna hit it with some super glue. And that's it. So this fly I use as a top dropper sometimes. And it works fantastic. I've also used it as my primary fly. And it also works great. Just a really, really cool, simple variation for those of us that love to fish small flies. So that's it. Hope it helped you out.